Chris Dunganier, founder of the Conscious Education Podcast. This is a live session filmed in our Magnetic Mind Masterclass, which is a coaching program. If you hear me uh, referring to some of the guests or talking to people, this was recorded when it was live. And so you're not able to uh, comment or chat uh, to me, obviously. Enjoy this session and uh, do subscribe or share it if you think it's valuable. Bye for now. All right, so let's get into today. I'm super excited. So today is about hearing yourself sabotage understanding part-time personalities, and we're going to give it a little bit of an upgrade. Who's ever done the uh, the auditorium or the stadium parts uh, contract upgrade with me? Has anyone done one of that session before? Ha-ha. So if you have, today we're going to be having some more fun with that. So a lot of you are saying, yes, you've done it. Uh, that's going to be great. So we're going to get in and we're going to have a lot of fun with the, uh, the parts upgrade. And, and the reason is, is a lot of times I, I notice in myself and others is as we're going for what we want, there's this little protector controller in the back of our mind. And so as we all know, we start in our current reality and we're driving forward to a desired reality. However, a lot of times we're, we end up our focus down here on something else. And this other thing uh, today, we're going to call it the egoic agenda, egoic agenda. And I'll explain why that's a nice term. We're going to talk about this egoic agenda because a lot of time we're here in our current reality, going towards our desired reality. But really, we're so busy being down here and we're doing everything else but going for what it is that we want to create. Now, here's what's really interesting is the ego is so focused on trying to fix itself, trying to be what it needs to be in order to have the end result. So what I found was every time I would go for something, really go for it, instead of just going all out and playing to win, there'd be this part of me that would say, but what if you're going too fast? But what if you don't do da, 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 da? And when I really listened to what it was saying, what I really listened is it actually wasn't in the end result at all. Instead, it was in the end result of everyone else seeing me as good. Instead of going for what I wanted and going and creating, being on the absolute razor's edge of turning my thoughts into things, I was actually playing a different game than I thought completely. And the game was, how do I get praise? How do I get praise? And that's fascinating. Once I realized that my egoic's agenda was actually to be praised rather than to be a creator, it was like it melted away. I saw it. And I see this in a lot of people. They think that they're going for an end result, but they're not. There is a complete other agenda that's going on under the scenes. Example, I get a lot of coaches come to me and they think they're in the end result of creating a coaching business, but their egoic agenda is they actually want to get seen as somebody doing a good thing. That's what they actually want. They say, Chris, I'm in for a coaching business, but actually they're trying to work out how they could have saved their mother. They tell me that they're in the end result of uh, making more money. But, but the truth is, is that their egoic agenda is actually to finally be safe. And there's this other agenda, like this undercurrent that is, that is uh, rattling away. That's the real truth. And once you uncover the real truth, you can then realize and ask yourself, do you want to stay with that focus or do you actually want to bring it back, recode it and get your focus back? So this has become very apparent uh, to me. I was, I was speaking to a, a recent colleague and this colleague is, is so focused on what they think is creating money. But the truth is the egoic agenda is that it's bad to have debt. The story that they're telling themselves is it's bad to have debt. And, uh, you know, this person might be on the call. So uh, I hope so, because for over a year and a half, we've been talking about it. And instead of going for money, it's always about how debt's the problem, how debt's the problem. It's just bad to have debt, so bad, can't, can't, so bad to have debt, can't have debt. It's always there. Another person that, that's in my environment, instead of going for the creation, going for what they want, their agenda is trying to, to please everybody. So what's really going on is how do I make everyone happy? So instead of going and being on the razor's edge, going for it, smashing it, taking action, going for what they love, putting their heart out into the world, they're asking the question, how do I make everyone happy? How does everyone be happy? How do I not disappoint anyone? 
And it's this other thing that's going on that doesn't allow them to go there. There's someone else that always seems to be in a race. Instead of in the end result of creating and having it, there's a race. It's how do I do this faster, better than someone else? All the power is with others. How do I do it faster than someone else? And I reminded this person recently and I said, hey, you know what? In order for it to be a race, you have to start in the same position. If you don't start at the same point, it's not a race. It's just two people moving. You see, a race has to have the same starting point and the same end point. There's no race. So, so what is this race? What is this idea? And it's this agenda. And, and, and what, what, I've, what I've realized in sort of inspecting myself and the people around me and then working with nearly 100,000 people now is that we, we lock ourselves into certain egoic fixations. And then we wrap that egoic fixation into so many different stories, but the actual fixation doesn't change. It doesn't change until we see it and we call it and we name it. Once we name it, we bring the power back, we own it, we can let it go. But, but what, what I see constantly is whatever's happened in our formative years, whatever our unconscious has latched onto, it's like there's a contract. And the contract is, I need everyone to praise me, or I need to please everybody, or I need to be a certain way. See, a lot of people aren't in the end result of what they want. They're in, they're in how do I match up to this ideal that I've made up? Others, instead of going for what they want, it's how do I do good? How do I be loved? And so there's, there's so much there. It's so much there, but it's like it's a contract. Another person uh, has a contract that is, that is always looking for how people are going to abandon them. Always. Any sign of conflict, they code up a reality where they're going to be left by themselves. They find people that even say this to them. If they, you'll have nothing, you'll have nothing said to them. And that's their agenda. Their agenda is to actually overcome these challenges. So it's very interesting to me, you know, very, very interesting. And the reason I'm giving you all these examples is as I'm trying to uh, share some insight that might jog your memory into go, oh, I do that. You know, I do that. There's someone that always feels left out. And so their agenda, instead of winning, their agenda is to be involved in everything. They feel left out. They feel like the black sheep. So that's, that's the egoic agenda is to not be that. So to be very specific, we have an agenda that gets formed that creates our reality. And, and this, this agenda is to try to finally win a game we think we lost. It's to try to finally win it. So if you think that, by getting praise, you'll win it. However, if the search to, to achieve that creates your identity, if you were to ever actually solve it, you would never know who you are. So it's an unsolvable situation. See, the wounding created the agenda. The agenda created the self. So if you were to solve it, you would no longer have it. And so... The, the easiest way to describe that is, is if this is a problem here, just let me know. In order for there to be, uh, in order, if the agenda is to fix something, in order to fix something, what must you have? A problem. So if the agenda is to fix or improve something, if that's the agenda, if the agenda is to fix, improve, to be a certain way, the problem must always exist. Does that make sense? If, if the agenda is to change something, the opposite must exist. There's no way to be focused on fixing or improving something without there being something that isn't, that isn't where it needs to be. So let's dig into this. We're gonna do a little bit of day one of the Magnet Mind Immersion content, a little, a, little, a little piece of it, actually. We're gonna look a little bit at the uh, superconscious journey. Which is, uh, which is exciting. So the superconscious journey, you, you, we all start out as a pure creative spirit, okay? Meaning we're an energetic, superconscious, creative spirit. And from that, you become a individual with a limited perspective, meaning you get given one body. You start, you start a timeline. You get one perspective in this unified field of everything. So you get this one perspective. From that perspective, you realize that you're not the all anymore. So you realize 
there are certain things that you can do that give you more of what you want. And there's certain things you can do that give you less of what you want. And this creates your orientation to the world. You say, if I do this, it's good. And if I do this, it's not so good. Now, this orientation actually is created in childhood and becomes a golden cage for many of us uh, as an adult. See, what happens is, is we create our life in order to solve this limitation. Okay, so we're just talking about this little piece here. We create our life to solve this limited viewpoint. However, we can never solve it. Because if we were to solve it, we would no longer have a place to orient our life to. It's very interesting. Very interesting. Now, there are six, six main egoic fixations, self-sabotage patterns, or egoic orientations that I've seen that, that show up the most. There's nine in total, but six I see the most. And I want to explain these. The first one is the desire or need to be perfect, okay? The desire or need to be perfect. Now, what's interesting about that is typically this person has an ideal of how someone is supposed to be. And that's the ideal. This is good, and that's how I'm supposed to be. It might be an image, it might be success, but it's being perfect. It's very rigid. It's very, this person's a lot of time short-sighted. And they set up this idea that if I was just perfect, if I was just perfect, then I would have the desired result. Their belief is perfect people or in a specific perfect person gets the result. What's interesting is this egoic fixation was actually uh, Gandhi's fixation to the idea of being, being perfect. There's a perfect way, but also Hitler's perfect. Both egoic orientations, completely different outcomes, but this desire that you must be perfect in a certain way. And if you can be perfect, then you get everything. Can I just ask, does everyone understand that fixation, this ideal? There's an ideal. And if you could become that, a lot of spiritual uh, teachers are stuck in this egoic fixation. They say, if you drink this, eat this, meditate this way, then you get everything. Isn't it true? Isn't it true? However, how many of you know, and you've done it, you've followed everything you were told, and you didn't end up with the end result? True? The reason is, is because the ego has created itself being focused on this need to be, be something else. Therefore, it's in love with the chase of perfection. If it was to actually get that, it would no longer know what life was about. Does that make sense? It can never actually solve the riddle. So that the next one, so that's the first one, the need to be perfect. So in order, if you need to be perfect, you must be imperfect. See, if, you choose, if you're trying to become perfect in order to create, then the only way if you need to be perfect right now you're not whole and you're not perfect. Therefore, you're broken. Make sense? That's the, if you hold up one end, you get the other. The next one is the desire to be worthy. So, so, so the focus on the need to be worth it. Okay, I need to be worth it, deserving. So this, this orientation gets focused on doing good or whatever they believe is good. For a lot of us, if we're in a different culture to someone else, we go, that's not good from our perspective, but from their perspective, we, they go, wow, oh, that's, that's being good. They have an idea that if they're good and worthy, then they deserve it. For example, if they just work hard their whole life, they deserve that they deserve a great retirement. If they, if they are nice to people, then they deserve people are nice back to them. But it's not true, is it? It's not true. Sometimes people that are super nice just get pushed around. You see, they say, if I do real, if I do good for people, I'm going to be rich. Which makes no sense because money doesn't care whether you're good or bad. And again, this is another thing. You can literally see people's egoic fixation 
out there in the world. They say, yeah, you must deserve it. You must do this. You must, you must be deserving. And it's very interesting. This person coded up in their very early childhood that if they're good, the universe just gives them what they want. Or sometimes they've realized the opposite. If they're not good, they get nothing. And, and it typically was a egoic uh, or, or unconscious identity that, that did something good, got what they wanted, got praise, got a lolly, got a sweet, got candy, or you know, got told off if they were bad. And they realized if I'm good, if I do good, I get what I want. And it's really, really interesting to realize that a lot of people aren't going for what they want. Instead, they're trying to fix this worthiness thing and to be worthy, to be deserving, to be deserving. If you have to try to be deserving, what does that mean you are right now? Not deserving. You see, you got to do something to become the person to, to that, that it deserves the end result. So if you're trying to become worthy, then you're not worthy. Another word for you're broken. You see? You see this ego fixations. That's number two. Number three. Number three. Yeah, Legita says, people say all the time that you need to deserve love and money and all these things. But isn't it interesting? How many of you have seen someone and you look at their relationship and you go, he or she doesn't deserve her? You know, or you, you go, they don't deserve them. Or you, uh, or you go, how does that person have all that wealth? They don't deserve that money. You know, because it doesn't matter. So anyway, uh, we're, we're talking about the egoic fixations that cause us to believe we're broken when it's not the truth at all. It's not the truth at all. Does that make sense? It's not the truth. Okay, so number three, that the third uh, egoic agenda, self-sabotage pattern, this fixation of the identity is not good enough. So this person, this is my, uh, my core orientation, the desire to be seen as good enough. So a... Not good enough fixation goes for praise. They want to be told you're good enough. They want praise. They want to go for that. Instead of going for what they truly love, they actually go for praise. And you'll see a lot of uh, not good enough people can never feel unfulfilled. See, if, you're, you, if you focus on trying to get praise and then that, that fills you up, you don't have a, an internal feeling of validity. You don't have an internal feeling of validity. Those who are going for uh, the are going to to have the solve the egoic agenda or self sabotage pattern of I'm not good enough. What they're really trying to do is say I'm not good enough, but look at this amazing work I've done and praise me for it, please. Very unfulfilling. Again, if you're not good enough and you're trying to solve that you're not good enough by doing great work, then the problem is is stuck there. You're still stuck here. You're still stuck trying to get praise for work rather than being good enough as you are. Okay, so that's three. Number four, number four, I don't belong. By the way, these are in no order. Uh, I think they're written in a different order in the book. I'm just going through them off memory, okay? Number four, uh, don't belong. The egoic agenda is to belong. They feel like they've always been left out. They feel like other people have... Uh, inside information, they feel like the black sheep, they don't want to be left out of anything. They want to belong. They want connection. Even if the marriage isn't right, even if the relationship isn't right, they, they just want to belong. They don't want to, they don't want to do anything that might sabotage that. So if their end results are to create amazing things and it might cause them to be different from those they belong to, that they'll find themselves doing everything else to sabotage it so they can belong. That they can belong. Okay. The, the, that idea of uh, searching for belonging it definitely shows up with adoption, definitely shows up with people that move a lot in early childhood, is this, I don't feel like I belong, in trying to find belonging, the egoic fixation on that. If you're always trying to belong and to do things to be connected and belong, what does that mean? That right now you don't fit in, you don't belong, you don't have a tribe, so that's the fixation. That's number four. Number five. Capability. I'm not capable. Okay. I'm not capable. So this egoic fixation is on the fixation of trying to get enough resources to finally be able to go for what they want. Okay. So I'm not capable. So I, because it's not me, I just don't have enough time. I need to create more time, then I could go for it. I just don't have enough money. 
I'm going to go create more money so then I can go for it. I don't have enough knowledge. I need more knowledge. Once I get more knowledge, then I can go for it. Okay. And, 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 that's, and that's a really interesting thing. They never have enough connections or knowledge or time or ideas. They never have enough. That's what it means. It's like they're not capable. Inherently, it's like if I just had this additional thing added to me, then I could have it. So I'm just going to go get my MBA before I start my business, or I'm just going to get another doctorate degree, or I'm just going to get, you know, I just need another $10,000, or I just need a different this, or I just, I wish I had a bit more time. You see? So, so this egoic fixation is, is that they're not, that there's something that they need. So the egoic is, uh, is fixated on being capable. And so therefore the problem is, is that they're not capable. So that's the world that they live in, that there's always something else they need. This is, this is my father's one. He always has something that he's missing. Uh, and the last one is insignificance. Insignificance. So the egoic fixation was, is being seen and being significant. Okay. Many people who focus on drama uh, end up with a lot of drama. They learned, the ego learned, I'm not significant. But if I cause a lot of drama, then everyone's paying attention to me. So now I'm seen. So the, the ego is fixated uh, on, on being seen, being visible. And so maybe they code it up in their reality. No one sees me. I'm the, you know, I'm invisible and I need to do something. I, I had someone uh, recently I was working with and they had a, a disabled um, sister and the disabled sister got all the attention and they could, because that's what the parents had to focus there. And so they never felt like they were seen. So they're always trying to do things to be seen. They were, they were became successful. Then they had health problems and then they had marriage breakups and they ended up in court. And all of these times, there was a part of them that always felt good. You know, they'd be taken off to court in trouble, but they felt good because finally they got the attention of their parents. You see, they just wanted, they just wanted to be seen. So the ego was fixated on being seen. So here's what I want you to get is there's these, these six fixations. I'm insignificant. Uh, I'm, I don't belong. Uh, I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy. Uh, I'm not capable and uh, I'm not perfect. And, and this allows us to create an identity, but it actually fixates us on something. Most of us aren't going for a life we love. Most of us aren't going for the life we love. Most of us are trying to solve that little voice in the back of our head and have this agenda. How's that? How does that land with you guys? Can you see it in yourself? Can you see this in others? There's no rules. I feel that uh, that I can, I can be all of those uh, at different times, but I know that one's most true for me. Yeah. One's, one's most true for me. Now, there's nothing wrong with these fixations. There's nothing, there's nothing wrong with them. You know, there's nothing, there's nothing against someone being focused in that way. It's nothing, nothing against it. it. It allows us to create an identity so we can start to carve out who we are and shape our personality. And there's actually no way to solve them. So here's my question. Someone that was fixated on belonging can they still create a life they love, even though uh, they, they might not feel like they belong? Can they still create the money that they want? If someone, if someone still doesn't really feel like they deserve it, can they still create it? The answer is yes. The answer is yes. Uh, can they still feel like they're not quite perfect, but have everything that they want in their life and be completely enjoying it? Absolutely. If they try to focus on fixing any of these things, all they do is give it more power. However, what I've noticed is the more that we take our attention off our egoic agenda and we focus on creating a life we love, guess what happens? The volume of this turns down and all of a sudden the brain focuses in a completely different way and starts focusing on end results and learns to accept ourselves just as we are, you see, and realize, oh, I'm, I'm actually not broken and I'm allowed to have money and fame and, and loving family and freedom and time and beauty. I'm allowed to have all of this just as I am. And it, and it dawns on them and they go, wow, I've spent my whole life thinking that I needed to solve this or thinking I needed praise from others or thinking I didn't fit in. 
And then I realized there was no way to be worthy more or less. And then I realized there was no way to be more or, or less perfect. And then I realized, and then I realized there was no way to be more or less any of these things. <laughs> right? That's what we that's what we realize. We go, wow, there's no way to belong more or less to the human race. There's no way to be more or less perfect. Perfect doesn't make sense. There's no way for any of this to even be solved. So since there's no way to solve this riddle, why don't I just focus on creating a life by love? And that's one of the big shifts that we make here, you know, in the magnetic mind. Because if you're, if you're focused on that bottom reality, all you do is attract more of it, hey? All you do is attract more of it. So we're going to have fun. We're going to upgrade uh, this contract. So what's interesting is that the, the aspect of you that is keeping this alive here actually did it out of a really good intention. Hmm. What was the intention? Could you say that that intention was bad? If you met a two-year-old and the two-year-old's thinking to itself, okay, every time I'm good, I seem to get what I love. Every time I'm bad, I don't. I should just be good. There's nothing wrong with that. See, there's nothing wrong with the, the, the three-year-old going, wow, look how they are. That's perfect. I should try to be that. There's nothing wrong with that. Can you see the positive intent of, the, of this young version of us? You can see there's a positive intention. And you can also see how that as time progressed, there needed to become a point where we, we literally dropped that. You know, It's like this person going on this absolutely amazing holiday adventure. And they've never been overseas before. They get super excited and uh, they, they pack this huge bag up and, you know, everything else. And they get super excited. They're going on this huge holiday. It's going to be an adventure of a lifetime. There's, their friends are going to be there. It's going to be so much fun. It's everything that they've ever wanted. And they, you know, they get on the plane and they get there. They get to the baggage, uh, you know, the, where the baggage comes off the carousel. Out comes all their baggage and they look around and they realize there's no trolley. Oh, there's no trolley for all this baggage, you know? And so they, they pick up the baggage and they go, what am I going to do? So they're kind of like, there's no trolley and there's no one around to help. It's just them. So, you know, they pick up all the baggage and they start carrying it. And, and it's a long way to find their friends and, and to start the adventure. And then it dawns on them, like, they don't need half this baggage. They don't need any of this stuff. They don't need it. I mean, they, they've never needed it before, you know? It's, it's And so they start just, letting go you know and then they go on that adventure of a lifetime and it's it's going to be kind of like that it was useful at one time and however it thought through in a in a smart way in an old time but then when you actually arrive at the moment you just realize it's just not needed anymore you know like it, it just wasn't needed it just wasn't a correct assumption you know just wasn't correct. It's funny. So when I arrived in Australia back from uh, uh, the UK, I've got all of these clothes. And it's been four years uh, since since we got back, and uh, we've got all of these warm clothes. It's never under nineteen degrees Celsius. So what's that? Like seventy two degrees. It's never under that. And so I've got all the all this stuff, and there's just there's just no need for it. No need. And when I left, I thought, well, I better not get rid of it. I better keep that. But since I've been here, there's no need. No need. Don't use it. And so that's, that's, that's what this process is like. So there's a really great, uh, there's a really great positive intention behind your, this, this aspect of you, but also there's a really great skill. If you were to feel into the aspect of you that has held on to this belief, held on to this egoic agenda, what would you say? is a really good attribute. Like, what's a really good attribute of this, this part of you? I would say that that part of you is committed, 
is tenacious, is bloody stubborn, has kept on believing it was not good enough in the face of complete contradiction, kept on believing that it didn't belong in, in spite of all of the people that love it. It is like the most amazing. So what if we were able to use that tenacity, that skill, that stubbornness, and instead of it to keep recre recreating this problem it needs to fix, what if we were able to take its tenacity and instead of it upholding the egoic agenda, we just had it completely double the focus on the creating a life you love. What would that be like? Hey, Chris here again. I hope you really enjoyed that session. Obviously, it was streamed live to our Magnet Mind Masterclass uh, coaching program. If you'd like to be involved in that program, please do reach out. Uh, we do have spaces you can uh, apply for and you can join. So do let us know if it's something for you. And again, thank you so much for your support. Subscribe, like, and share this content so we can reach millions of people just like you and help them become conscious creators. Have a great day. Stay super conscious.